Are you looking to create timeless beauty in your garden? It's always a great idea to add roses. At Heirloom Roses, they know that the best roses start with the best roots, which is why they only hand propagate own root roses. These own root roses will outlive and outshine grafted roses from the big box stores, resulting in stronger disease resistance and a longer lifespan and stunning blooms that are always true to the variety. Heirloom Roses is located in Oregon, is a family-owned business that grows over 900 varieties of roses for gardening zones 3 through 10. Use their great search tool to narrow down your choice based on zone, fragrance, growth habit, color, and more. Plus, they have a one-year guarantee, so if your rose doesn't thrive in its first year, they will replace it for free. Heirloom Roses is also committed to producing only disease-free plants and genetically test all of the roses to ensure the cleanest plant material possible. You can have peace of mind knowing your newest rose will be healthy and ready to thrive and blossom for years to come. As a special offer for our listeners, Heirloom Roses is offering a 20% discount off all roses using Backyard20 code at checkout now through September 30th, 2023. And since they ship all year round, you can choose the perfect ship date for your garden. It's time to experience growing roses the way nature intended on their own roots. Visit them at heirloomroses.com to find your next rose today and take 20% off with Backyard 20. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. All right, we didn't really... It, it just hurts, everybody. It hurts to start talking about it now, but we're going to talk about fall. It's that time, right? We're getting close. What do you think, Batavia? As of this recording, I haven't even harvested my first summer vegetable. <laughs> now, oh. I'm, I'm about three to four weeks behind most folks in my area, so there is that. Um, but, you know. Yeah, it's tough because you got to start mm-hmm, the conversation mm-hmm, at some mm-hmm. point. You know what I mean? And I feel like we should bring it up in time so people can get prepared if they want. But I don't know. I've been starting seeds for a while. And it's crazy because I'm always looking forward to Mm -hmm. the next season. Not like I'm excited about it, but like literally looking forward to the next season. Sometimes it's painful because I feel like I'm removed from the current season I'm in. Well, you know, and and maybe my view on this is slightly different in that right now where I am, I'm at the point where I've gotten past some of the, um, you know, pest damage and things. All plants are healthy, right? They've not started to produce yet when it comes to summer things. Well, I I have like a couple of small egg um, zucchini out there, but all things are healthy. This is like, you know, the calm before, you know, the greatness then before the storm. And so this is a really happy place for me in the garden. Right. You know, so to skip ahead, skip past harvest time, you know, to all right, let's get ready for these next set of crops. It is it's a little bit of mental gymnastics you have to do. Yeah, it is. and it, But I think it's something we got to get used mm-hmm, to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's it's a piece of that puzzle that I, I think if your goal is to produce as much food as you possibly can you're in your space i think this is like that part of that a big piece to that puzzle is being able to do what's inevitably painful except for i don't hear anybody complaining in the winter time when they're starting the tomato <laughs> seeds just saying but i mean you know it's painful right now to be taking care of broccoli mm-hmm. seedlings and stuff like that but um i know we want to talk about like planting schedules kind of how we're going to do it seed starting stuff like that because I've come across some information, as I do all the time, though, that kind of is helping guide me into the right direction for my summer for, or my garden mm-hmm. for the fall. Yeah, we um, agreed, agreed, agreed. We talked quite a bit about garden design and having a garden plan more so than anything. And you and I were talking about this offline, off of the podcast line. Um, you know, the scheduling of things is so critical. 
Um, yeah. And I was commenting all positives, all, you know, praise around the job that you did this spring going into summer and how I just watched like, gosh, I wish I was that organized, you know, <laughs> like, like recognizing yeah. in the moment. Like, and I saw not only the starts and the, you know, videos and, and pictures of like itty bitty seedlings. And when you just look at it that way, it's kind of like, eh. But if you continue to, to watch, and this is over on Sandy Bottom Homestead, if you continue to watch the progression of young Ben's garden, like I'm, I'm looking at these onion seedlings and I'm looking at them being planted out and I'm looking at the green tops and I'm looking at, you know, this huge onion harvest, right? Like, and he was talking scheduling from February. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, ah, oh, you know. Well, I put some spinach seedlings under lights and then three weeks later, those spinach seedlings bolted, right? So anyway, I bring that up because yeah. it's really important, especially when you're now managing your summer crops that are out there growing and then your clock is ticking. All of our clocks are ticking as it relates to fall going into winter and what you will be able to do and when. You know, so that same like that same energy as the young people say that young being brought back in the late early to late winter going into spring is the same energy that I hope that I can adopt in these next few weeks going into the next few months. I will channel it over to you. How's that? I will osmosis, channel it. Osmosis. Osmosis. Yeah. Well, no. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, a big part of it came from um, me trying to sell plants at farmer's markets and stuff. And so I had to get on a schedule. And once I get them started, it's pretty self-explanatory, you know, because, and I mean, even though this is coming out either the end of July or the very beginning of August, there's still some time for you to do this for some of your plants and 100% for next year. But I took it and I just looked and I mean, you know, the old saying, start your seeds six to eight weeks before you want to set them out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I kind of just counted back, you know, and I was like, okay. And I knew that some could take longer and like onions, like you brought up, like they can be planted in the middle of winter here. So I knew I had time with that. And then I kind of just went down the list to like the most sensitive crops, you know, like your cilantros and broccolis and stuff like that, cabbages that take longer and just started doing a little bit of like basic math to kind of figure out like how we could do it. And the, the level of complication came in for me was because I was like, okay, I need to get this amount to sell and then this amount to grow. So I needed to kind of be a happy medium, but I also don't want to be selling Miss Batavia some, you know, seedlings that like, I'm not going to mm -hmm. put in my garden for mm -hmm. another month. So I wanted to make sure that like the batch of seedlings that I was going to sell people that I was also going to put some in my garden at the same time. So I could legit be like, yes, now's the time to do it and not be like some of these other places in the world that will just kind of put stuff out willy nilly. You know what I mean? So, and then there's a whole hardening off schedule and stuff, but I think it, it did help me. Now the problem <laughs> the problem is, is I didn't make that same schedule for my mm -hmm. midsummer mm -hmm. planting. So there is a little bit of an issue there, but I'm also kind of tweaking my planting dates and also what I'm planting at the same time. So that's kind of helping me. It's um. so you had in the early, early, early spring, late winter, even you had kind of these two things that are competing, you know, what you were planning on selling to others and what you were planning on growing. And now you, the competition is, mm -hmm. Um, what you are currently growing and then what you want to be growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's what's going to come out of the garden. When can something else go in? What am I going to grow? What am I going to sell? When is it mm -hmm. going to be too hot? And when are we going to get the first mm -hmm. frost? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, if you take away the whole like spring heat here and the whole bolting mm -hmm. situation... Dude, it's, it's kind of like a, you know, spring into summer is kind of like, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's a lot less complicated because you don't really have a hard deadline. You know what I mean? Like you're going to see basically everything grow to some extent, but in the fall, you got a, yeah. you got a deadline yeah. and you got an impending deadline. That means absolute death for some things. And, you know, you don't want to waste your time or money or effort. Mm -hmm. So I was, 
I know it seems kind of doom and gloom, but that's just well, the fact no, of the I matter. Mean, I, you know, one, one thing, and I, I will let everyone listening, anyone listening, borrow this. There was, I think it was 2020, um, the first time I had an earnest, like what I consider a fall garden. And it was like kale and lettuce. And I was ecstatic. You know, the varieties I yeah. chose were very cold tolerant for um, for the lettuce. Because um, some lettuce struggles even when the temps get cooler. Kale, <clears throat> and since then I've been able to harvest kale like on New Year's Day. You know, it's like your typical curly kale, if I remember correctly. And I look back, and because I was able to experience that, I know it's possible. I know it's like your inspirational <laughs> moment of the episode, right? You know, <laughs> because it's very easy for me. You know, I start to wear down. It's very easy for me to say, "All right, let me start planning for next year." You know, but the yeah. I'm buying the shoe boxes of lettuce again. It's my great aunt calls them shoe boxes of lettuce. And I've just gotten over the hump. It's like me um, buying terrible tomatoes in the winter. Like, this is what I do. I like to eat salads. I like the types of greens that are growing in these shoe boxes. Um, so when I get back to a, a time frame where that can come out of my garden, shame on me if I don't set myself up to do that, you know, going into this fall and early yeah. winter. Well, and I mean, I, this is going to sound weird. To Batavia and I, it will not sound weird when I say it. But to the listener, it will. I wish, here, if I could have one wish this year, I wish that this fall into winter and spring, I could grow vicariously through you in your area and mentor you in starting the spring but you be like completely obedient to what i say do and i bet we could get some like good kill like you know we've had this conversation before so i mean it, it's like you can harvest on new year's day like just take take a second and think about that and where you live that's that's a huge deal man that's a big deal like that makes me like I can harvest kale whenever in the winter time, but I know what it's like to look outside and be like, what does grass look like? <laughs> what does it even feel like? And to know that you can like harvest it, like that's huge. So let me take a quick pause. I was really distracted by the thought of how many ex-boyfriends <laughs> have had that same wish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish that she would just, you know, I could guide her through and that she'd be obedient. <laughs> she needs to be totally obedient. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And says single me. Look, what I mean by that... So like, that as, I'm just telling you how successful their wishes have been. Um, no, in all seriousness, <laughs> in all seriousness, it absolutely is a huge deal, and that's the reason why I bring it up. But I appreciate it. It really it resonates to be able to hear that, right? You know, from someone else, from yeah. another trusted gardener, um, because while that was like that's the end of it, you know, we're talking like Jan one. That's pretty pretty kick ass when it comes to me and my space in the middle of yeah. Chicago we have by then gotten multiple days of freezing temps right um, and you know I stumbled into it but think about with just a little bit more planning you know what it could be and again I'm not going to have like 2800 raised beds full of food you know that's not going to no. happen I was watching this um, Absolutely I can't not. remember where the guy's from but let me tell you what he described where he was from he had one you know those um, high tunnels that a lot of the market farmers mm -hmm. um, use. And he was talking about growing through winter. It's so funny that we were talking about which episode we should record today. And this has already been on my mind. So he's talking about growing through winter, like five tips. And so I was listening. And then when he got to the part of um, we like we've uh, we have we get one snow fall a year. I was like, you know, let me go ahead and back out of this episode. You know, let me back out of this yeah. <laughs> this video because we are not the same, right? Um, which goes back to the idea of, you know, I'm going to be really real with y'all. Who knows what the next season is going to bring as far as weather? And so how, and a lot of times I plan for, oh, it's going to be X, Y, and Z, you know, frigid temps, a bunch of snow, all of that. There's nothing wrong with hedging your bets, you know, maybe what we're seeing with the changes in weather, maybe it benefits you to a degree. Um, so my plan for the fall, as we kind of transition into that, is I'm not going to go in again. It's not going to be 2,800 beds, but they're going to be probably a, a number of leafy greens, a couple of, you know, short term root crops. 
Um, and if they don't make it through that cold weather, it's okay. I can get them through that cold oh, weather we with you, though. Okay. I know I can. Okay. We All can. Right. We can right. do it, okay. Batavia. Yes, we can. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. I mean, because you, you hit the nail on the head early on, like three minutes ago. I and talk, and I, I talk myself out I was of like, it. <laughs> well, I've been stabbing myself in the hand to remember it the whole time. Like, don't forget it. Don't forget it. But you were, you were mentioning mm-hmm. variety. And you, like you pick really cold tolerant varieties. Now, this is how different you and I as areas are. You're picking cold tolerant. I'm mm-hmm. picking heat tolerant for fall. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just that in itself is like something special. Like I've got a video that's probably out by the time I'm, yeah, it's out by the time this um, airs and I'm doing broccoli. I'm doing three different types of broccoli and I'm doing heat tolerant. I'm doing a 57 mature day and a hundred day broccoli variety or maybe 77. I think it was whatever it was, but just by Mm -hmm. doing that, we're kind of hedging our bets against our, our late Mm -hmm. summer heat, you know, you know, um, the dog days of summer, you know, the end of summer when it just won't go away. So we're starting yeah. with that and then just kind of planning it out more efficiently. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just say this out loud because this is the quiet part. It's significantly cost me more money mm-hmm. to do this than I would like because I can't just get one yeah. pack of seeds. But if I can get four heads of broccoli, that pack of seeds mm-hmm. paid for. Mm-hmm. So... And if you if you don't know, two things I want to say. Um, one is I take the accounting part of it very seriously when it comes to gardening. So I really look into that because there is a real thing about people like us basically spending two to three times more money on our produce than we would buy at the mm-hmm. store. So that's one thing. And the other thing is you were talking about early in the spring – um, and you were looking at my little itty bitty seedlings and you're like, eh, they're just little itty bitty seedlings and you just, you follow it. And so that's the type of creator that I am in which like I could very well take these videos, shelve them and then give you all of it mm-hmm. in one video. But as you follow the journey through time, you will see these plants that were just itty bitty seedlings starting. I mean, look, I never said I'd say this out loud, but I'm going to do it just to get under Batavia's skin. And she knows what I'm going to say. How long do people want to sit there and watch you with some little ass seedlings in your garden? I was like, damn, she's right. But then that time came and they grew. And that's what this is. All these things grow and we can see it. So there is a way to do that. Um, Yes, ma'am. To, to, I told him, like I told him, he was, yeah, we were going through episodes and I'm like, no, nah, pass, pass, pass. And I'm like, I'm in a good mood. Don't get me wrong. It's not, you know, but no, no, I'm, I'm going to say, and so this is the reason why you get another uh, taste of this, the positiveness, uh, despite the way that you're treating me, you know, um, there is, um, so if you follow me on social media, thank you, under Be Better Garden, I struggle every year because I have this concept of, you know, a full garden. Like, that's what people are interested in seeing. Mm-hmm. You and I have talked about this countless times. Dude, until I like, ran out of voice. And so he's, yeah. That's not his view, right? You know, and so I will, you'll see gaps in, in the things that I share about my garden, Right. And it's not about me getting it pristine. It's kind of like this. The seedling is like an inch tall. Like it barely has its true yeah. leaves. Like, are you really interested in that? And um, so I'm going to tie this back to the it was nice. There's also this bit of a hole, you know, I'm still trying to get my garden sh- together. So you know, like pulling out a camera is a little bit more of a struggle for me. Whereas I could watch Ben and I was super interested this like late winter living vicariously through your garden, seeing that progression. Now let's fast forward to where we are now. The only way that you know that this is going to work, there are two ways. One, you can watch someone else do it and believe that it could work for you. So again, that's going back to late uh, winter, springish with young Ben, or you can actually go through it. So the thing about fall, I actually give myself so much more grace than any other season preparing for summer, preparing like with me trying to get on board with a bunch more spring plantings, because I know that there's an end of the line here. 
And so if it doesn't yeah. make it, it doesn't make it. But I can play around with it. I've started seedlings in July, like sowed in doors in July. And I'm like, okay, all right. These seedlings went out the beginning of September, uber small. But guess what? They produced, right? I've started direct sowing things outside. Oh, sorry, I got I got all excited here. You did. <laughs> and hitting a microphone. <laughs> I direct sowing outside in August. This is what this produced. I direct sowed September 1. Like You have to go through it. You have to try it, try it, try it to realize what really works in your area. Um, and if you just, again, say, all right, I'm done with my summer stuff and say maybe next year, I, I feel like you've lost an opportunity, right, to be even better prepared for next year. Put the seed in the yeah. in the dirt, man. And there's 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 this whole thing too where there's a mm-hmm. grace period. Like I have a schedule, and I mean I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Like my schedule was the first and the fifteenth mm-hmm. of the month. Does that mean that it happened on the first and fifteenth? No, it maybe it happened on the seventh, maybe it happened on the twentieth. But I had like this rough mm-hmm. schedule, and it's like if you watch me and you live in Minnesota. And you're like, hey, he's got his great garden so soon. Like, I could do it. And it's like, no, you can't. But you can adjust based on... And that's why when I do things to... I try to announce... Or I'm I'm starting to try to announce the date in which I'm doing something along with where I am. So, like, if I'm doing something on July 5th, then you know that, okay, he did this on July 5th. I'm going to get colder this amount of time sooner so I can go in maybe a couple weeks earlier or a couple weeks Mm -hmm. later or something, you know, depending on the season and do it. And I think that's the benefit of it because there's nothing that helps me less than watching a garden that is perfectly immaculate, totally filled out and producing 100 percent than somebody who is planting a garden consistently mm-hmm. and doing different things in their garden. That is mm-hmm. what helps me as a gardener to see, watch and hear. And that's why I think with this show, we really try to bring that to you. Like it ain't all, you know, roses and, and tulip petals or whatever. I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> I just kind of made something up, but um, you know, it ain't all easy And fall in my area is not easy at all and it can very well be a very sad time to garden and that's why this year i've really tried to like i'm trying to like hone it down and say like okay i'm going to start my seeds around now see what happens see how much i can withhold them or give them to get them out there and in what order do they need to go out there you know like i don't need to plant my radishes in july But I need to plant, I need to put my plants of Brussels sprouts in the ground by the middle of July in order to try and get a harvest this year. So, like, if you put that into perspective, you know, so there's like, there's a method to the madness and there's an order in which we go to plant our vegetables, just like most people do not go put tomatoes in the ground and the same day plant their Mm -hmm. sweet potatoes generally speaking now if you're late putting your tomatoes in obviously but if you're trying to get stuff in as early as possible there there is a definite flow in which we can plant inside of our gardens and that's something that we're trying to like keep up with and stay on top of and do am i making sense okay so um what's the first thing that you want to put into your garden or you feel the need to put in your garden for fall um it's easy answer lettuce Really? That's see. And that's that's my last Mm -hmm. because of the heat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's totally different. Like for me, it's cabbage or other than Brussels sprouts, cabbage. So heading crops, I've not kicked the can enough on it to to say no. Um, But now that we are talking about this, I have one place to that still has some pretty healthy looking starts this time of year. I need to get out there this week to see. Because at some point that starts to wane. Um, my theory is that there's a really tight window to get heading crops like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower into your garden in my area. Um, I'm in Chicago, yeah. Illinois. I've tried to plant transplants, like I'm going to say sometime in September, and they just didn't. They didn't have enough time to take off before the cold weather really set in. Um so all of that said, I'm, I'm poking around online. Um, and as an example, 
cabbage transplants are noted through July 30th, which, you know, once you hear this, if you're in my area, that would have been like a week ago or something, you know, or maybe a couple of days from now. And that makes sense to me. So if I can trans, so transplanting cabbage in from April through the end of July makes sense where if you put something in at July 30th, you're going to get fall cabbage, right? You know, so if I look at broccoli, you know, want to know what the end date for broccoli is? July 30th. And this is based on Northern Illinois, which is where um, my county is um, in Illinois. And so I say that to say like some of these crops, you know, cauliflower, it looks like, and I'm assuming, yeah, it looks like it says transplant here, August 10th, which I had a pretty crap experience with um, cauliflower this year. So, but I, I say that to say like from where we're recording today, I have a window to try to start some cauliflowers um, by seed and then transplant them out by August 10th. Again, we are a couple of weeks ahead of when you'd actually hear this episode. So know that and I don't want to make things confusing. So I'm not going to go down item by item, but these, that's the reason why I veer towards lettuce because I could harvest it at any state compared to something that's going to produce yeah. a head. But here's my guidance right here. Gosh, we should have done this episode two months ago. I would have been right on top of it. Yeah, but the problem is in the real world, people don't have ears for fall. I didn't have ears to hear about (laughs) fall two months ago. Keep it really real, son. And I mean, for me too, it's like, you know, you you bring up collards and. I didn't bring up collards, but you know, I'm always ready to talk about collards. Yeah. Cauliflowers. You're always ready to talk about collards. Oh, I swear I heard collards. I, should, I wish I had the closed captions on because I could be like, I told you so, because I know no, I'm right. No, there's a warmness prob- that I experience not. in my heart anytime that I actually say collards. <laughs> and so I know that I didn't because, you know, there's this coldness okay. that's etched around my heart right now. <laughs> um, I can't start my collards. I should probably start mm-hmm. them now. But, you know, I've already got my cabbage and my broccoli going, so I, I wait a little bit for those. But see, those are another thing, too. Like, based on my experience, they last a lot longer. So, like, I've 100% planted um, broccoli and cabbage and cauliflower and all that stuff. Basically, my entire mm-hmm. fall garden, I've done it in late September before and mm-hmm. still got a harvest. The problem is, is I get about a month of growth maybe six weeks and then it stops and then i'm stuck taking care of plants that don't Mm. move for about Mm. two months and what that does is there's a lot of risk involved because i'm managing like issues with diseases and stuff like that so i have to make sure of that so it's like i try to i'm trying this year to eliminate that and even though I know I can be successful when I plant these things, what I'd really like to do is get these things planted and actually get a fall harvest in fall instead of like late mm. winter when I normally get my, you know, cause you're talking a huge swath of time. I mean, January into February, absolutely nothing grows. It stays there. It doesn't die. If it's not too cold, it can die. But we're kind of walk, walking this tightrope. And it's like, oh, God, it's going to get cold. What do we do? And I'm not really at that point after just sitting there and watching something for a month, not really doing anything. I have a really hard time motivating mm. myself when it's going to get really cold to be like, all right, I'm going to go out and cover my garden tonight. Like, I just rather just be like, let's just let it go. You know, by that time, even the accounting situation out yeah. is out the window. I'm like, whatever, let's just and that's, move on. I mean, that speaks that doing that speaks almost against your style of gardening anyway. So the one thing the guy with the five tips that only gets snow one time a year said, and I actually continue to watch the video because there's still nuggets that you can gather. Um, If he has a more mild winter and he basically is focused on X, Y, and Z as crops, then I need to consider that because my winter is rougher than he is. But anywho, um, he it's that reminder. The reason why we, we talk about these, you know, kind of fall plantings each year is we're dripping on ourselves, right? We need to talk this through each year. We're dripping on some of you all that are longtime listeners. And then for those that are new, like we think it's important for y'all to hear this. Things grow slower as there's less daylight. Yeah. Well, and, you, and exactly. And so therefore you have to add 
two weeks is the general rule on to your planting date because of the lack of sun. So you have to remember at this point, and nobody wants to hear about the amount of sun that's out there. I'm aware of that, but it's important. It is the most important thing. But from this point forward, you're l- losing one to one and a half minutes a day of daylight and it speeds up as you go along, which are like, eh, it's not a big deal, but you're talking about both ends of the day and you're talking about the angle of the sun being lower. So if you've got trees, mm-hmm. you may, your garden that was full sun could very well be part sun and that changes the way that you garden. And it should change the way that you garden. So you were so excited to get in there. I was ready to hit a, the bail after the, you know, things grow slower. But you like, <laughs> it's like you picked up my thoughts after that. And I'm just like, well, let me let, let me let him go ahead and continue to explain what's in my head. No, it's absolutely, it's all of those things. And it's very easy to, especially right, right now, we're still, we're managing summer crops. We're, you know, it's, we're not the longest time, but I'm getting, you know, more than 10 hours of, of sunlight a day, right? It's hard for me to now imagine and plant, plant for when I'm going to get nine, you know, and again, yeah. more specifically, the part that you mentioned about it being lower. Remember the aha moment that I had when after all of these years, I finally paid attention uh, to the backyard and how shady it was compared to the front yard when we got to fall and remember all of the dreams that i had of like you know gardening in the winter and it was like well you know on the bright side i never got to that and if i did i would have been gardening in the wrong place you know the front yard would be the place for that which also is and i'm just this is a little bit of a tangent i was sitting here and i was thinking about and i tried to do this a little bit this year as crops are coming out of your beds You know, like my front yard should be the thing that's almost bare as we kind of get to August ish. When you think about that. Yeah. Because that's the place that I want to put put these fall crops. Ding! I couldn't get to the bell. I want you to know it was coming. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, again, this is so playing around with these things now not only help you for this year in my mind, but it also, now that I think about it, broccoli, broccoli, uh, Garlic should be planted in my... Fr- I'm so excited. I'm sorry. I'm just bamming on stuff here. You guys are going to hear all kinds of background noise. That's me. That's me hitting equipment here. Uh, garlic should be planted in the front yard. You know, I... Yeah. One could argue sweet potatoes should be planted in the backyard. That's going to go all the way until I get to the point where I'm not planting anything. When I pull out my sweet potatoes, that may be a place where... Well, I'm getting my my stuff mixed up now. If I have garlic in the front yard, and I'm harvesting that at some time in July, then can't I put in these heading crops that my extension service just said, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, they could go in directly after it? That's the most ideal yeah. setup because that's the space that's going to get the most sun and the sunny less days you know, um, as, as the yeah. year winds up. Well, I mean, you got to think about it too. Like I've said this before and I've noticed I've had my greenhouse for, I think this is my third year. I don't know now. I'm pretty sure it's my third year. Let's or, just say it's my third year. It could have been 2020. Was it the, I think it was like pandemic year, first pandemic year. I think this is the fourth year. It may have been. Okay. Maybe it's my fourth year. But anyways, I realized last year that during the, like, I can, I can plant all the way up until November in there, but with the amount of sun that gets in there, nothing, it's the same concept. Nothing really changes or does anything until you, you beat that summer Mm -hmm. solstice and you get about a month behind it. And then we'll start getting a couple of warm days here and there. And I mean, January can be very cold, but we're starting to kind of get into this mode of like a warming trend occurring mm-hmm. in my area. And that's when we'll start to see things grow in there. So I've already figured mm-hmm. out that pattern, right? But here's the deal. I can't plant winter stuff in there, but so early because mm-hmm. it's just too hot. So I've got to be very careful about how I do it. Incense, insane, <laughs> cut. <laughs> but this also goes back to shout out to all those folks that have empty beds right now. Like, don't get tied up with the whole. 
Why'd you glare what? through me when you said that? Don't get tied up with the whole idea of, you know, the sunniest place is if that bed is already full of stuff and you have an empty bed in a place that's maybe not the sunniest come September, October, don't matter. Put something in that space anyway for the fall. Um, This morning, in addition to, I was looking at my potatoes and they've started to flower and folks say that once the potatoes start to flower, you know, that's when you can like harvest new potatoes. There should be some potatoes underneath, you know, those leaves and, you know, around those plants. And so I put my hand down, but it was just like wet straw. And so I just kept on moving. But my thought was this little bitty bed is going to be empty soon enough. By the end of this month, for sure. I think my calendar says I should be harvesting potatoes around the beginning of August. Um, And so it's like, all right, I said to myself, what's next for this space? I don't think I plotted out, planned out what I was going to plant after the potatoes in that particular space. Like that was a problem I had. I had some ideas, but I never was firm in any of them. Right. You know, um, and it's to be quite frank, it's time to get firm now. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, that's how we are like, I mean, damn, as I sit here, I'm like, all right, now I need to think about going and starting Mm -hmm. this. Now I need, you know, I need to start really thinking ahead. Um, But you're, you're exactly right. There's things that, you know, when I pulled up my potatoes, I didn't know what I was going to do behind it. And so I made the executive decision to just let it sit. Now it's been sitting for a month as of this recording, roughly. And I'm just about to go out there and start putting in my Brussels sprouts. So, you know, if you think about it like that, like, yeah, it's kind of tough, but at the same time, like, it's just yeah. a moment in it's time, mulched. man. That bed and has mulch on it, though, right? Yeah, it's, it's fine. mulch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mulched it and mm-hmm. I fertilized it and everything, so it's it's ready to go. Um, so I mean, I look at it like that, and I'll put those seedlings in the ground any day now. I'll start that process. I'm going to do a staggered process because I'm doing the heirlooms versus mm-hmm. hybrid varieties. So um, the first ones that go in are going to be the heirlooms, but I'll look back at it in a couple weeks. And it, I won't even remember it being empty. And I can tell you this, like I've had a really hard time having an empty bed and I'm really thankful right now that it's empty because I know that I can just go plant it whenever, you know, it's like my squash bed right now. It's done. It's diseased. It's ate up. I'm, I don't think I'm really getting anything. I need to pull everything. And so we're kind of talking about it the other night and I was talking to my wife about it, you know, I talk about it and she's like, oh yeah, I'd love to have more squats, but she doesn't mm-hmm. understand the concepts of, of it at all. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, but would you rather have a handful of zucchini or would you rather have 36 heads of cabbage to do whatever we want with? And she's like, well, I'd rather have the cabbage. And I'm like, well, there no you go. No one really wants like, 36 no heads point. of cabbage, but I hear you. Well, yeah, throughout know, the know, winter. I know. I know. You know, throughout the winter. I mean, look, we just ate a head of cabbage that had been in our fridge for a month. It's a beautiful crop, so, um Beautiful vegetables for all of those reasons. It is. So, as we talked about it, you know, and, and when she put it to me that way, because it's nice to talk to somebody about that because she doesn't understand, but I get to know mm-hmm. what she really wants. And what I got out of that conversation was that's the same mm-hmm. thing I want. You know, I don't care about zucchinis or anything that much to where I need to push the envelope, have it suffer when I can just make it easier on myself. And that's where we're going with this is, you know, as you come into fall, we did the episode about filling gaps in your garden and that's good. But at the same time, if you like think about leaving stuff empty, if it's disease, pull it out and just let it sit because as the time of this listening, you still have time, no matter where you are in this entire country, you can either start all of your seeds for your fall garden now, or you can start s- starting some of your seeds and buy transplants mm-hmm. for the other part of it. So there's still time for you to do that. So um, earlier in the episode, when I searched for my extension, I think I typed in what to plan in the fall Illinois extension service. And this extension service, this this is copywritten, or at least the copyright was updated in 2022, so I consider it current. It has Garden Zones 5A through 7A for Illinois. We're not going to fight about that today. And it Mm -hmm. also has Northern Illinois listed as 5A and 5B, which 
listeners, we're not, you and I are not going to fight about that. I've had so many people comment. I thought, you know, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, I, but we also, well, I bring it up because this source, this document that they've prepared that I've never seen. Right. And I'm like, where have I been? I have a bunch of other things that I use from the extension service. It directly tells me from the beginning of spring all the way through, you know, fall planting dates and the type. Are you planting by seed or transplant? Like this is, this is it. It's this, it's here it is. This is my guide, yeah. right? I'm going to print it out because that's the place I'm from and I still have ink in my printer. So I'm going to print this out and I'm going to circle the things. We had this conversation earlier uh, coming from spring to summer. It's the same conversation. Stop fighting against it. Like remove some of the friction. There's something beautiful about fall as well, right? And that's, it's starting to cool off. Pest pressure is starting to change up. You know, uh, some of these vegetables are said to be sweeter, <laughs> but you know, you know, to each their own. Um, I'd love to have a sweet piece of broccoli. <laughs> so I, I look at this and say, I'm absolutely going to be still be enjoying tomatoes as I'm putting out, <clears throat> you know, fall transplants. That's just, I'm going to love it. Right. You know, I was, uh, I saw some tomatoes as an aside. No, I saw some tomatoes because um, I have some green tomatoes. They're not like of size yet. And I said, it doesn't matter how many years I do this. I'm as excited as I was last year, as I was the year before that, as I was the year before that. Yep. Um, and so now you look at fall, like that is kind of the best of all these <clears throat> worlds. When you look at, you're able to still harvest some of your summer crops. And now you're planning for that future. The future is only a couple of months away, but that's okay too. Well, and you're, I mean, I think this is where we fell short-sighted a couple of years ago when we were really talking about growing a diverse garden, mm. when in fact, if you're timing everything out and you're doing it just right, you will have the most diverse garden you can possibly have at certain times of the year. You will have your tomatoes and you will have your lettuce and you will have your broccolis all at the same time if you time everything out right, which is what we want. That's like the crown jewel of the garden, right? Is to go out there and be like, look, I just went out and picked the whole damn grocery store. Like they ain't got nothing on me. I got everything they got on them damn shelves right here in my basket. I mean, that's what we want. That is the goal. It's something that's beautiful about it. And I'm not looking to change anything, but you know, you think about it, you may have a couple of cucumbers that are hanging on. Maybe, maybe not. But once you get to the point of being able to get some baby lettuce that I know Ben loves, you still have some tomatoes like that's a dream. And we know that's not going to happen for me when my lettuce is growing in April. That's just not the way that this works, you know, no. but it could happen in October, at least for the tomatoes. I can't claim cucumbers. Boy, oh boy, do they give you a hard time. Um, but I, I I leaned back in my chair because it really, really was that thought bubble and that aha moment. And, you know, we sometimes talk about diversity in the garden, like almost as if it's a moment of time. But it's really that entire growing season. It is. You know, my son asked me from March 20th every day, is it summer? (laughs) Is it summer? I'm like, it feels like summer, but it's not summer. Is it summer? I'm like, it feels like summer, but it's not summer, son. Finally, the first day of summer comes, summer solstice. And I said, David, today's the first day of summer. And he goes, really? <laughs> it's already been summer. Well, it's the same <laughs> thing with fall. It's, is it fall yet? Is it fall yet? Look, man, like I've said it before. Once you start seeing them pumpkin <laughs> lattes <laughs> can start popping up and stuff, you're, you're late. Okay. And, and it's, it really is to kind of bring it back full circle. It is a hard pill to swallow that there is in the middle of summer, we need to be thinking about our fall gardens, but it will help you complete your mission to have produce throughout as much of the year as possible, if not longer, which hopefully in future episodes, we can get into extending and stuff like that a little bit more. But 
knowing the grow times, knowing the varieties, the tolerances of temperatures of things, and using these all these little bits of knowledge that if you've grown a spring garden, you already have this knowledge. You just got to kind of flip it. And then you can figure out your planting schedules mm-hmm. from that. And it doesn't take long to make a planting schedule, everybody. Put it on a crappy show on Netflix that you don't even care about watching because you're going to be sitting there watching anyways and just get you a pen and paper and write down what you want to grow and then think about it. What is the coldest? What bolts first? Because whatever bolts first is going to go in last. And, you know, what stays on the longest. And then your area is going to be different from mine. Clearly, I mean, you still got mm-hmm, cabbage yep. in your garden, right? It's just like I'm probably two or three weeks off from harvesting. That's that's a distant memory <laughs> to me. I don't even remember what a cabbage plant looks like at this I've point. I've not harvested a cabbage for my garden this year. That's probably most important, you know. So whatever I harvest is going to be the first cabbage of the year, which means I haven't gotten cabbage for my garden since last August. Right. You know, like that's crazy to me when I think about, you know, how much cabbage you were harvesting going back to Valentine's day and, you know, all of that. Them doorknob cabbages Mm -hmm. look good. And still, still as I'm sitting here, here. see there Mm -hmm. still look good. Yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Still look good. And so, you know, and like for me, I'm doing the same thing I'm doing with my Brussels sprouts and my broccoli is I'm doing hybrid versus heirlooms. I've got an heirloom variety and I've got a couple hybrid varieties and I'm doing the same thing where I'm stagger planting them and I'm and I also spread them out amongst like my pots and stuff like that. But that kind of gets them mm-hmm. going. So I hope that helps everybody. Do you think that that will help people to get started in their gardens for fall? I hope so. And not I, shrug when they I'm think about it. I'm going to add one it. more note. Do a couple of wild um, word searches, excuse me, around fall and your extension service. I mean, I, we're just going to be team extension service forever and a day. Every couple of months, I find something new that's uber helpful. Like that, it's it's This mm-hmm. is literally taking the guesswork out for me. Like hard stop. Yeah. Right. I, I don't have the, the, the mental capacity to compare a bunch of notes like I'm looking at this and saying, OK, they told me that I could plant carrots by seed, of course, through July 30th. Let's not be here on August 20th trying to sow carrot seeds. Yeah. I mean, at that point, I feel like yeah, you're just exactly. wasting your time. Yeah. You've been yeah, told. Yeah. You need to be obedient with what you've to been told. the extension told. service. You like that, yeah. didn't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there, <laughs> that's that. Now, I do want to say that this show is sponsored by the Planter app. Um, If you have not checked it out, do so. There is a link in the description that will get you a discount on it. It has all kinds of companion and combative planting. Very easy to identify versus green and red circles. It's a simple drag and drop interface. It's got 80 plus plants plus thousands of varieties. It even has some flowers in it. All the info about the vegetables already there in the app for you to go. So it's a one-stop shop. You can create custom plants and varieties, make multiple garden plans. I like to do mine for each year and then go back and look and see how I planted. And it helps me with my companion or my crop rotation. And it has growing guides to help you with good articles to get into the app. It's available on Android and Apple. And also, if there's a feature that you don't like, you can email the creator or go through your app store and he will actually add it to there. There's been a couple things added since we've been supporting this, since he's been supporting the show that has been recommended to him. So definitely check that out. It's the Planter app, spelled P L A N T E R. And it is an invaluable tool for planting your garden. And you don't have a bunch of little pieces of paper floating around everywhere. It's nice and clean. So some of the notes that we were making around, um, if I look at kale, my extension service says planting it from July 7th through July 18th as transplant. Now, I've told you that I've planted transplants much later than that, right? I can easily make a note using the planter app to say kind of the exception 
right? You know, to that planting rule yeah. where in two years, I don't have to look back at this uh, document to say, oh, I missed my window of July 18th. I could say, oh, well, you know, I had success starting on September 1 with kale transplants, you know? And so yeah. again, you don't have to kind of relearn the same lessons. It's one of my sayings like, you know, I'm tired of learning this lesson again. I've already learned that lesson, right? And it's that's actually yeah. pretty common in the garden to, <laughs> to learn that same thing over and over again. Forget the lesson that you learned. Uh, but there are plenty of tools out that could help you avoid kind of that stumbling in. Yeah, and I, I stumbled across it. Um, they, you know, I was trying to find something like mm-hmm. that that was digital. And everybody wanted so much money for it. And this was very affordable. And actually, this year, you're going to be very proud to hear over the winter, I'm going to create another garden plan for my pollinator garden. And over the winter and spring, I'm going to focus on fully 100% planting it out finally and moving on to the next section. So I just put a waterfall in there, which actually kind of spurred it on. Yeah pretty excited about that oh i have oh i didn't no, tell you, you didn't. about that did i i have a bird bath oh. that's in the center of my garden as you would think bird bath should be and up through like maybe mid-june ah, it's such a wonder to watch but then the plants that i planted around it like by the time you get to the end of june you can't even see the bird bath nor can the birds because it's just leaves everywhere. And every year I say, oh, I should move that thing. Like some of these things, I mean, again, these are the tools that you look at. How big does this plant get? Right. You know, how yeah. wide does this plant to get? Right. Um, I, um, it's on my list to move this year. I'm not exactly sure where, though, where it would make sense. I got a good gardening mm-hmm. question for you. So this is off Spotify. And it's off of the Not All Gardening Methods Work in Every Garden episode, which is very hard to title because I didn't want to say not all garden episodes work or not all garden methods work. But um, Tony writes us, you're going to like this. You ready? Hello. Would like to know why grow bags are so popular. They don't hold water well and dry quick in the heat. Wouldn't plastic pots be better? My man, pots and pans. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> well, it must have been a Patreon a subscription episode. We were talking about this recently. Okay. Uh, it was. Okay. It was on Patreon. We were talking about this. I so. felt there was, Tony, there was a very weird moment between us where I felt like you were inside yeah. my head. <laughs> and, you know, there's plenty of room for some folks there, but it was a little bit uncomfortable for a moment. It's mm-hmm. getting crowded in there. It's getting crowded. So... I felt like it was a missed opportunity and luckily you picked up the slack. So I'm going to take credit for this statement um, as if, you know, it was my, you know, thought they're very affordable, you know, when it comes to comparing them to other containers, just other pots. You, you said this. In the, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I went to my grocery store this morning and one of the grocery stores I go to and asked the bakery if they had, um, five gallon well i did the whole spiel i normally do and i say yeah i use them for my garden and the lady said i do too then i'm like i knew i wasn't going to get any because she's clearly been you know so anyway she's like if you call us i mean every grocery store is different if you call us you know the day before we'll set some aside for you and i'm like oh wonderful um so you anyway, i say that to say beyond i mean compared to free five gallon buckets no it's not as affordable but compared to some of these larger containers that you're buying maybe even decorative containers yeah you mentioned it um, when we were talking on that previous episode you can get like 20 something dollars uh, a five pack of whatever the size is yeah right um so i mean i think that's that's the benefit even empty they're easier to move empty empty they're easier to move around um I think I'm going to wrap it up there as far as, you know, the goodness. I use them (laughs) because I have them. And it's one of those weird things where, like, I just, I don't know if I had to do it over again. Yeah. So I have not used them and I don't plan on using them. Uh I didn't get them. I, I had somebody reach out and want to give me some and I told them I didn't want them and they got offended. Um, so you, you, you brought up costs. I just thought about something, you know, 
Um, it's five. It's twenty some dollars for five pots, right? It's four dollars for a five gallon bucket at uh, Lowe's by my house. Simple math. Um, now I will say this: uh, these pots that we're referring to, the grow bags, they are a lot more attractive looking than five gallon buckets, and we did say that in the mm-hmm. Patreon episode. Um, but I'm with Tony on this. I have seen everybody talk about how great they are. And then I hear murmurs of how dry they get, how the breathability is not quite there. And I mean, my problem is, or no, is there, but it is an issue. The big sell is that just more aeration to the roots. And when I think about it like this, then why are tomatoes that are growing at the store in plastic pots, if you let them sit too long growing tomatoes? <laughs> Like, I don't understand why that's such a big difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? The selling point behind them. Um, but no, I agree. And if they don't hold water, well, like in my area, there's no, I mean, there's a hundred and as 115 degrees on my back porch the other day. Um, that's, there's no place for something that dries out there. I'm, so I don't know, Tony, I don't know why they're so popular. I think it's just kind of one of those gardening fads that I think took it's off. great advertisement. I think that. Mm-hmm. The options, you know, so they have a couple of different colors now. I like the classic black ones if I want to use them. Um, I I do. I'm going to put my hand deep down because my theory in the moment is the first couple of inches dries out quicker than other pots. And that's a problem. Right. You know, but I'm wondering if I'm going a bit deeper down how moist that soil is i'm gonna check that out once we get wrapped up with this episode um well i'm gonna i'm gonna one up you on that one so i'm gonna say that it you're you're correct that it is getting more drier mm -hmm. going down but because of the aeration i bet it's getting drier going in from Mm -hmm, the sides mm -hmm. as well so you're actually not holding as much water which means technically if you have a 10 gallon pot, you can take a couple gallons off of that based on how much it's getting dry. And then if you take them and you put them on a shelf or something like that, like the ground will help retain some water on the bottom. So I imagine that they're probably drying out even faster. And I know there's people out there that love those, these bags and good on you, but I just, I have not seen enough to be like, I need to get these pots and I need to get them now when I can get them off the side of the road I can, you can go to garden centers and ask for plastic pots and stuff like that. Um, I believe my first success in growing tomatoes in containers is going to come out of grow bags. So don't it's 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 a love hate relationship here. Uh, they look great. Yeah. Um, I I do. I want to take a closer look at the Roma that I have growing in there. Like there there's something that's just not right, quite right about them. I just can't put my finger fully on it. Um, there is something about the drying wet drying wet right so if they're drying out faster that soil is constantly getting dry which isn't ideal for any plant right you know any vegetable that we're growing so so yeah i've not done a let me compare this grow bag to this regular pot i may add that to my list tony next year because i'm gonna still i'm gonna grow and grow bags until they fall apart i'm just gonna keep it real yeah. Well, you pay yeah. for them. And they are doing a job. But My favorite you thing repur- to grow them so far are peppers. But would you repurpose them? Re- repurchase them? No. I'm going to go with a like a there 90 plus percent no. There you go. Yeah. The most success I've ever had out of growing a container in my garden has been a five gallon bucket. I'm not even going to lie. Like straight up five gallon bucket. It works. It, it did its job. It's ugly. I have as hell, a whole though. wall. I mean, you know, fence line of five gallon buckets and peppers are my favorite thing to grow in those too. Um, uh, to note though, um, noting for fall things like lettuce, things like you know, I've never grown successful like cabbage or anything in there or broccoli, but leafy greens. Um, you know, maybe grow bags are better suited in your cooler temps. Fall and spring, spring and fall. If you got them, figure out a way to use them. If you don't have them, I yeah. maybe think twice about. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm not a big proponent of like if you purchase them and you hate them, get rid of them. I think you should use them. I mean, let's be honest; it's a responsibility that we have. Is like, look, you bought it, use it. 
until it falls apart and then move on to the next thing. Mm, but, I don't. Um, I'm gonna. I know we're wrapping up. I don't necessarily agree with that fully. I feel like I'm still getting some use out of them, but I prefer my 17 gallon um, pretty rectangle pots over those grow bags. A good example of that is those blue containers I was fussing about the other day to you. Like that is a classic example of like, just stop using it. It gets more trouble than it's worth. Um, but for something yeah. that you're still getting, you know, some good use out of it, you know, it may not be the best. I'm definitely not going to say they're the best. Um, but it's better than not growing at all. Let me say it that way. Yeah, I think it was marketing mm-hmm, at mm-hmm. its best. That's what I think it is. And I think they're so easy to produce and so cheap that multiple companies did it. And you see the outcome. Um, I would be curious how many people absolutely love them. But I think that we would need a lot of data and separate that based on zone and where people are planting. And I guarantee you're going to see a clear and difference. are they growing in other mediums? Uh, other containers yeah are they growing in ground or are they growing in raised beds i think all of those things influence your opinion yeah so there you go everybody if you would like to be like tony and leave us a question by all means spotify has this feature where you can leave a guard we have it so you can leave a garden question and we'll answer it we cannot answer you on there because they have not thought forward <laughs> enough to think that that would be a good idea so we have decided to do it on the show or you can come join us on the BYG Community Gardens group on... I said it wrong, didn't I? It's okay. They know. Say Backyard it. Gardens Community Garden. <laughs> there you go. On a Facebook group, and we can pull questions off there, or you can reach out to us. Can just come to our website, BackyardGardensTV.com, become a patron, Apple subscriber, all that good stuff. And just remember one thing, everybody. Today, we have learned to grow and grow for change. See you in the fall. No, we'll be back before then. I'm just joking. (laughs) Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.